So I'm a goalkeeper, so I've been watching Robert Sanchez quite closely this season. He's had a great season but had some moments recently, but he looked back to his best on the weekend against Arsenal. What have you made of his first full season? Um, I'm pleased with Rob, really pleased with him. I think it's normal when you consider that uh, you know he's a young goalkeeper, first season in the Premier League with, with the crowd, which I think can you know, influence things more than maybe we think. Obviously, he had last season, last season without crowd, but I think the Premier League with crowd makes a, a difference. So, uh, the life of a goalkeeper, as you'll know, whenever you make a mistake, it gets highlighted quite a lot, and and because you're close to the goal, it's it's problematic. But um, I, I look at how Rob's developed, I look at how he's helped us, I look at. Um, the difference he's made to us as a team, we're delighted with him. I mean, he's got all the attributes that you need to play at the very, very highest level. And as I said before, the only thing he's missing is the experience and the, the games, and, and he's accumulating those. Um, it's never going to be a straight line-up. I speak to these guys all the time about how development and progress isn't just a straight line. You know, you have to have setbacks, you have to suffer, you have to have pain. But it's how you respond and it's how you keep getting up is the most important thing and, and that's where I'm really, really happy with Rob. Great first question. These, these have got, you've raised a high bar now. I'm not sure these guys can, can match that now. He's never said that to me. <laughs> never. <laughs> oh, huge pressure, yeah. Um, Graham, great to see you. I guess the only place to start really, the, the breaking news in the last hour or so, Sean Dyche has been sacked by Burnley. What was your reaction when you saw that one? Surprise! Um, I feel for a you know a colleague, someone I have a lot of respect for. It's never nice when somebody loses their job, of course. But uh, we also know it's football, and these things happen. But I don't think he'll be out of work for long because of the job he did at Burnley was fantastic. What does it say about the, the role that Premier League managers play? The pressure they're under. Someone who's worked with one of the, the worst budgets in the Premier League over the last few years. He's continually kept them in the division. He, when they went down, he took them straight back up, but yet finds himself being sacked with, with eight games to go. Well, I think it's just part of life. We, we, I mean, Sean's a big guy and he knows how it is. He knows the, the world. I mean, um, there's, there's the reality is there's more people to feel sorry for than Premier League managers, but there is a, a pressure, there is an expectation. Sometimes it's fair, sometimes it's unfair. It goes with the territory, we know that when we go into it. So we, we all know that when results don't go well, you're under pressure, you've, you've got scrutiny, and, but it's part of the thing that you sign up for and you have to deal with it. And that now takes you into the top six longest serving Premier League manager. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's the best question you've put to me there. Um, yeah, well, that, exactly, that's how ridiculous it sounds, isn't it? Fantastic result against Arsenal. Um, how much has that changed the dynamic around the place and, more importantly, the, the confidence for, for the last few games of the season? Well, I was a bit, bit like I was talking about with Charlie there. It's Sometimes you have to have pain, you have to have a bit of suffering and things have to go you know, not the way you want them to, to be able to come through and then get stronger. I think the boys have been... Um, really, really good in terms of dealing with a, a not a particularly nice period of the season. You know, six games, six defeats was not pleasant for us. But I think we've um, reset after the international break quite well. The Norwich performance was really good. And then to go to the Emirates, I think, gives everybody a bit of confidence, a bit of belief um, and a chance to go through a tough period and then to come through it and then take a step forward. So. You know, we have to obviously play another game against the top team at the weekend, but from, from where I see the group, it's, it's in a good place. What's the team used ahead of the Spurs game? No, we were pretty much as we were. Um, Stephen Alzati is ill, so he'll miss the, the squad. Um, Shane's still suffering with his thigh, um, but obviously uh, no, no further problems from the, from the Arsenal game. And on Spurs, they've scored 14 goals in their last four games, and as we've seen this season, the, the, the Son Kane partnership looks to be incredible. How do you set up a team to not only go and win the game, but to, to contain that? Well, it's very difficult, um, that's for sure, because I think Antonio's done a, an amazing job there since he's been in. Um, of course, Son and Kane are the headline, if you like, of that team, and rightly so, because they've historically been incredible performance in the Premier League but I think 
you're doing Tottenham a disservice if it's just about those two because they've got fantastic structure um, they build up really well <clears throat> two sixes control you know control the game for them uh, great width with the with the wing backs Kuliseski has, has come in and added something to their attacking team as well so credit to, to Antonio and, and to Tottenham They've, it's a good team a top team that we know from experience is hard to play against Thanks Graham um, <clears throat> Graham, does it change your way of preparation or, or, or does it change much when you've played Spurs twice so recently? Oh, I wouldn't say change. I, I think we're probably a bit more familiar, of course, than, than a normal situation. Um, but in terms of how we've prepared the game, the same. But uh, yeah, I take your point that because we've played them recently, uh, we are closer to understanding each other better but that's just the past they still have to play this game this game is a different dynamic um, hopefully we're in a better place we can p play better than we did in the previous match and and we'll need to if we want to get something you know at Spurs Is it is it more helpful when you're sort of analysing potential duels you can see how your player went up against that guy six weeks ago Well as a as a historical reference, like I said, there's, there's only a point you can get from that because, again, the game will be completely different. Um, I think they've improved their performances since then and got some more, you know, some more impressive results. I think we've had some better performances and better results since then, so maybe that changes the dynamic. A game of football, you can look at the past all you want, but that's why we love the game so much. You never know how it's going to go, and and that's why every game is exciting, and we're looking forward to the game. Let me take you back to the further past and sort of try and get some reflected glory from Charlie, where the last Premier League trip to Spurs was when you gave Robert Sanchez his, his debut and it was a big surprise to everyone outside the club. When you look back to that day or that decision, how bold and brave a decision was it and has it worked out as you'd hoped, better than you'd hoped, far better than you'd hoped? Well, in some ways, absolutely. I think it was... a uh a bold decision because of the respect we have for Matty Ryan uh, and what and what he did for the club and, and, and him as a person and him as a professional but at the same time um, I think the job here for us to be able to achieve our goals is to be able to look internally to look to make some decisions that maybe are from the outside a little eyebrow raising shall we say but when you understand Rob and you understand the qualities that he has um, you know he's quite unique in terms of that from a goalkeeping perspective he has the attributes that can play at the highest level in in world football the only thing as consistently said to is is you know he was spent his last season at, i think at Lowland Rochdale so the premier league games premier league experience is the one thing he lacked how he how he handles disappointment how he la how he handles failure this is what the premier league the biggest test that the premier league gives you it's, it's of course the, the level of player, the level of, of opponent, but it's it's also the the scrutiny and um, external, internal dealing with suffering, which until you go through, you, you never really know. And um, Rob as a person, I think he's grown um, incredibly since the time that I've been working with him. I think it's credit to him, it's a credit to Ben, it's credit to the guys behind the scenes. And... Um, it's, if I was going to analyse, yeah, you, you can never know for sure. But I always felt that he, he could help us win games. I hope, I hope he's he's got that. He's got those attributes to make those top saves. Those comes and catches the ball, relieves pressure, um, and he'll get better and better. He's it's just the start of his career, really. And in a vaguely similar thing, Enoch has obviously had some setbacks this season with injuries and things, and then after a cracking start, roars back into our consciousness at the weekend with that mm. great goal. How, how has he dealt with his setbacks this season and how much more is there to come from him? Well, you can imagine he's, he's had to suffer. You know, he's, for different reasons, injury, illness, um, hasn't been able to play as much as he'd like. You know, you're adapting. He's going from, he's coming from Salzburg in Austria that win the league pretty much every year, experience success, success, success all the time. And then you come into a different environment, Brighton in the Premier League. It's not so... It's not so similar in terms of winning every week. We wish it was like, but it isn't. That's the truth. So you have to deal with that. Um, 
but as I said before, if you bring the right characters and you and you understand the process of going from this level to this level, you understand it's not a straight road, and, and you understand that at times you have to pick yourself up and you have to go again. And it's the same with Tarek Lamptey. It's the same with Alexis McAllister. It's the same with Jakob Moda. It's the same with Marco Corella. It's the same with all our guys. You know that. That's why I think it's an exciting team, it's an exciting club. Um, we need to help them carry on that development process. That'll Ooh. do me. Thank you very much. Tim, over to you. Graham, hi. Tim on Zoom, how are you? I'm very well, Tim. Hi. Yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. Just wanted to ask a little bit about the process. You mentioned it every week and we saw the joy on you and the players' faces at Arsenal. At must require great patience and faith at the end of a you know of a difficult run. Is how hard it is to keep that patience and faith in in what you're doing and, and the trust in the group. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, for, for for different reasons because we're all human beings. We want to win. We want to we want to have a nice weekend with our families. We want to make our supporters go home happy. Um, and when we don't do that, there's nothing worse in, in, in football, to be honest with you. But at the same time, you know that it is part of what we're doing. It's part of the job. It's part of what can happen in the Premier League. So then you have to have good support, I think, internally, not listen to too much of the external opinions and experts. And um, at the same time, respect their opinion, respect that they have a right to have an opinion and um, carry on working. Because, as I said, um, for us to be able to achieve our goals, for us to be able to keep going forward, we have to accept that sometimes things are going to get tough, things are going to be, we're going to have to suffer, and then it's how you deal with it and how you keep going through it. And the players, I mean, they keep having trust in the process. I think Robert Sanchez and Ian Rapper both spoke after the game on Saturday about how much they enjoyed the process last week ahead of the Arsenal game. Yeah, they, they saw it through Monday to Friday, where you were taking them, and then it's three points at the Emirates on a Saturday. Yeah, and as I think I've said this before, you, you know, um, winning football matches is the best way to convince people that you're on the right path. And you know, there's there's always people, there's always uh, different opinions, you know. And uh, I use a term: to keep the wolf from the door, you have to win. And we haven't done that much, so of course, there's more negativity, there's more criticism, there's more everything that's not very pleasant out there that you have to contend with and deal with. And, and ultimately be strong and and try to you know understand w what you're trying to do where you're coming from and keep working it's the only it's the only way I've you know I've I left this country when I was I can't remember how old I was 36 and I've been on this path and that path has brought me here um, it's served me quite well so I'll continue to do that